When it comes to spending your hard-earned money on performance parts for your Jeep 4.0 engine, today we're going to go over all the parts that I have added and adding today in this video to get the best performance out of my Jeep 4.0 engine. Before we get into the parts I will be installing, let's go over what is currently on the Jeep starting with the intake. So this is a stock intake tube from a Chrysler. You can see the Chrysler symbol right there. And uh, I did not do this part. This was already here and it was cut. It used to just have a filter that would just sit right here. It was off of a Ford. It was like a Ford k &N. It was kind of a cone. It wasn't very good. And probably like eight years ago, I went ahead and made this add-on section. So this is an in-gen uh, cold air intake piece of tube from a 98 Subaru Legacy GT that I had years ago. And then this is a generic can and filter and then i also have the pre-filter on here for the sand and dust and dirt that uh, to keep it out of the can -N. so i do have a header you can see right here on the bottom side i have skid plates and all that stuff you can't see under there very easily so this is basically a cheap ebay header it has been on this jeep for about 10 years and it does have a small crack and has a small leak um, as a lot of them do and uh, that just happened maybe about five or six months ago. So it lasted quite a long time. I apologize, it's all under the skid plate. I have a very tiny high flow cat from Magnaflow. And this is also a Magnaflow turbo muffler. And then it's uh, a piping that goes up and out over the axle and out the back. So now that you've kind of seen what's already done to this Jeep, let's take a look down at the table at the parts that we will be installing today. Now, in order to get a little bit more air into that intake, this is a eBay 62 millimeter throttle body. Now, this is a generic no-name. It is cast aluminum and then machined and milled, and it does look pretty good. I'm pretty happy with the quality of what it seems like right now. It comes with everything I need right here in the bag right here, all the gaskets and everything to swap throttle position sensor, uh, IAC and all that stuff over to this throttle body. So this guy was $142 on eBay and they are all over eBay. Uh, the BBK ones are 200, and 200 plus dollars or $300. And also Rubicon Express used to make a 62 millimeter throttle body. I'm not sure if they do or not anymore. And in order to address our spark, we have our CRT performance. This is our new ig high performance ignition coil. We got a high quality uh, cap and rotor, and then eight millimeter spark plug wires. So these are one millimeter bigger than stock. This puts out more juice than stock. So also at the same time, I'm gonna be replacing my spark plugs. I just use NGK V-Power, just standard replacement plugs. So the gap for a Jeep is 0.035 or 0.04 if you have a coil on plug type design of I think a 05 or newer TJ. We can gap this up to 0.060, which is almost double the gap, and that's gonna just be much more efficient and better running, hopefully, that's the goal. So we're gonna install this and see uh, if that's the case. And part of the three main things, fuel, spark, and air, we got spark and we got air, but fuel, I didn't do anything about fuel. If you saw my last video from a couple weeks ago, I bought those injectors, those Bosch injectors on eBay, turned out to be fake, just as I had suspected. And uh, case suspension makes, uh, or they rebuild the four hole Bosch injectors, like legitimate ones, not fake eBay ones. Not super expensive, but I'm gonna have to save up. It's gonna be another month or so before I can buy those, get those installed. And we'll see if it makes a difference between these two upgrades and then uh, adding the injectors on top of that to see if that helps out anymore. So we're gonna start with the easy stuff. We're gonna replace spark plugs, cap, rotor, uh, ignition coil. And uh, what I'm first gonna do is I'm going to mark the spark plugs on the top of the distributor and then we're gonna pull the plugs off, pull the spark plugs out and uh, start assembling the new distributor cap with the new spark plug wires according to what I marked it before. So. The easiest way is to make sure you just mark it before, that way you're not figuring out the firing order. Okay, so we got our new spark plugs in, our new wires in, our new cap and rotors in, and we got our high performance ignition coil right there. Everything is all done, ready to go. So let's go up over here, pull the throttle body off and start cleaning and swapping over parts to the new one. Actually, before we take that throttle body off, I'm always 
of the opinion to do one thing at a time. So if I go ahead and do all this, then do the throttle body and do all the swap over for that and I go to try and start it and it doesn't start, I have a lot of different things that could be a factor that makes it not start. Right now, all I have is a changed out spark plug, wires, and a cap and rotor. So it's gonna be super easy to know uh, if something is not right and it's not running properly. I know that it's what I just did right here, cap and rotor, spark plugs, or spark plug wires, and not the throttle body. So if I start it up and run it now, everything runs perfect runs really well, and then I go and swap the throttle body, and then I start having issues, then I 100% know that it's the throttle body. Because if I just did everything all at one time, started it up, it'll be a little bit longer diagnosis process of trying to figure out what either I messed up or the part messed up, and I'm just trying to make my life easier. So let's go ahead and start, start it up and uh, make sure it runs first. Now removing this throttle body was probably one of the easier things that I've ever done. Super easy, four bolts, a couple of three plug-ins, not a big deal, super easy. But to find out if this is really even worth our while to install this, let's measure the inside of our throttle body right here. And this is about 55.5 millimeters. And then this should be a 62 and 61.88, 62, close enough. And then we measure the actual intake itself to see if it even hold more than 55 millimeters of airflow. So we're going to ahead and measure right now and it's actually 61.33, which it definitely is bigger than the 55 millimeter uh, inlet hole that's on this throttle body. So absolutely putting this on will give us more airflow for sure. But in order to install it, we are gonna to have to swap over our map sensor, our throttle position sensor, and our idle air control valve right here. Now this kit did come with a T20 Torx, a little vacuum cap off, four throttle body bolts, uh, multiple uh, types of gaskets, and uh, I'm gonna be using this one because that matches mine. This will be for the idle air control, and I won't be using this, it comes with some sort of air filter or fuel filter. I have no idea why. Uh, maybe an older, like maybe the 4.2s or something had some sort of weird thing. I'm not really sure. Zip ties and a hose. So I'm not going to be using any of this, um, absolutely any of this, except for these two gaskets. And uh, unfortunately, this T20 will not work because the Torx bits on the idle air control is a security torque, so I'm using my Matco Torx bit set, and I will be using that to remove these. But before I do that, one of the things I want to do is on this butterfly valve right here, there is some Torx bit that holds the butterfly valve to the center section right here. I want to make 100% sure that these are not gonna rattle and fall out, so I'm gonna pull them out, put red Loctite on them, Well guys, I am not having any luck with these eBay parts. Um, the throttle body is missing the map sensor tube right here. The part that the map sensor plugs into on the side of the throttle body right there is missing on this one. It is supposed to have it in the pictures on eBay. It has it in the photos, but it's not physically there. So in order to get this thing on the road and done, I went to my local hardware store, found this double uh, fitting for brass, and I'm going to grind down the barbs on one side, cut one side down, epoxy it in there, and basically kind of press fit it into with a little bit of epoxy, and then uh, hopefully it will work. 
And uh, I've, I've been talking with the people uh, who I bought this from and we're at the point where they want to issue me a partial refund if I can fix it myself. So uh, if I can fix it myself, I'm going to uh, request a full refund because the cost of my extra time and the knowledge and experience that I have of over 10 years of working on vehicles and school and stuff is more than $140 worth of labor in order to fix this. So uh, I'm gonna ask for all my money back because that's ridiculous or they can pay for the shipping for me to ship it back and then ship me another one. But for right now, I'm gonna fix it and get it running so we can finish up this video. We got the brass fitting all installed epoxied in and it is definitely not my best work, but it looks like it's gonna seal and it's gonna hold and it will attach a tube to it for the map sensor and it should work just fine. Now before I started up for the first time, what I did here is I am discharging the positive out the negative. So I disconnected the negative cable and isolated it and I'm running these two together. So the ECU and the computer, it will completely, hopefully forget the fuel trims. And now we're changing the amount of air and spark that we got. So we want to let the computer relearn with the new airflow and the new spark. We got it all warmed up. Let's go take it for a spin, see if it feels any different. Just right off the bat, it does feel a little snappier off the throttle, but this thing really is a turd right now with this automatic transmission and the 40s, it really sucks a ton of power out of it. But this definitely feels a little snappier and because this is a three-speed transmission, you're never really in, you know, like the correct gear for your power band. Well, after the test drive, I can say that the throttle is a little bit snappier. It feels like it has a little bit more, a little more pep. Not really that noticeable exactly how I expected. Um, this, these 4.0s are pretty much been around for a long time. They have them pretty much tuned as, as well as they can be straight from the factory. So was it worth uh, the $250 that I spent on these two upgrades, not the fuel injectors, so just the throttle body and the ignition upgrade was about a little under $250. <sighs> it being a neg negligible difference, um, I'm not sure if it's really worth it. Um, I'll see in the long run, like the miles per gallon and will I notice it more, um, it, you know, if I'm on an obstacle and I just need that throttle right there to see if it, uh, you know, goes a little bit better. Uh, time will tell, but I'm not convinced that it was worth the $250 for these upgrades. For those of you that stuck around to the end right now, uh, JP Magazine back in the 2000s did dyno tuning with all of these types of upgrades. So I'm just going to give you the numbers, the real world dyno numbers of what uh, improvements basically these exact setups that I put on my Jeep. I will leave a link to that article down in the description. It is an old one in like a Motor Trend archive. So this was a Jeep Cherokee with a 4.0, an AW4 Auto, 488 gears, and 33s. This is the Jeep that they put on the dyno. It had 133 horsepower and 176 foot-pounds of torque. So they did a ignition upgrade 
a k and filter, a header, cat back exhaust, a 62 millimeter throttle body. So exactly the same setup that I have on my Jeep currently, except they use the HyperTech Power Programmer 3, which are expensive and hard to find right now. And they came up with 152 horsepower and 200 foot pounds of torque. So it had an increase from bone stock, 19 horsepower and 24 foot pounds of torque. So from factory bone stock engine, the, with the setup I have now, I can say that it probably, I have about 15 more horsepower and about 20 more foot pounds of torque, just a wild guess um, based on what these numbers right here. So the only other things that you can really do to these 4.0s is you can do a stroker kit. Uh, there are turbo kits and there are supercharger kits, but those are super expensive. And um, from what I've seen, they are not really reliable as far as you know tuning and because these engines are just so archaic just boat anchors uh they last a really long time and they took take up a lot of abuse but they're not really that tunable so just for example they did another test with a four six stroker kit they had 172 horsepower and 224 foot pounds of torque so they had 39 horsepower upgrade and 48 foot pounds of torque so in the future i may rebuild this motor and do a stroker kit and uh you know, maybe I'll do a supercharger, maybe I'll do a turbo. I don't know, it just depends on, you know, I don't really feel like I need to add a ton of more power because if I do like an LS swap or something in this, I'm just gonna start breaking axle shafts or breaking axles and gears and transfer cases, stuff that I don't break right now because, you know, this thing doesn't have a whole lot of horsepower to put out, especially going through that automatic transmission. Well, that's gonna be it for this video, guys. Hope you learned at least a little bit, gave you an idea of what you may and may want to do and spend your money on on your 4.0s in your Jeep, Wrangler, Cherokee, came in the WJs, uh, the Grand Cherokees. This motor's in a lot of Jeeps, and they're all very similar. Actually, this exact engine is a high output from a Cherokee, not even the original engine. If you want to follow me on social media, guys, I am at MuddyBeards4x4. If you want to get sweet discount codes from Barnes 4-Wheel Drive, from Onyx Off-Road, and a bunch of other companies, click the link in the description. It's on our website. It's all down there. You can get good deals on all kinds of stuff. And until next time, guys, we will see you on the trail.